Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha man zakkaha. That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. Don't fear anybody else, illa Allah, except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. To overcome that, to control that. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa Nasta'inu wa Na'udhu bihi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. May yahadihillahu fala mudillalah wa may yudlil fala hadiyalah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله ولو كره الكافرون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها الملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون وبعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam we thank the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal for giving us life and for having guided us onto the right path we ask him to keep us on the path of Islam and do not take our lives except that we are the best believers we could ever be and to save us from the punishment of the grave and that of the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the fire of hell is a reality. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, al jannatu haq wa naru haq that the gardens of paradise is a reality. And the fire of hell is a reality. And we are described as people, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those people who believe in the unseen. So we believe in the unseen as told to us by the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is how we have information about the unseen. And it is very important and critical and compulsory upon us that we believe in the unseen because Allah Azza wa Jal, He is unseen to us. So we believe in Al Jannah, the gardens of paradise, and we believe in An Nar, the fire of hell. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ku anfusakum ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. Save yourself and your families from the fire of hell. The fuel of that fire of hell is people and stone. Alayha malaika. Over the fire of hell, controlling the fire of hell seen about the affairs of the fire of hell and not been punished by it are angels. Ghilad, they are very harsh. Shidad, rough and harsh. Strict, stern. La ya'asun Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'alun ma yu'marun. They do not disobey Allah when He commands them in all that He commands them. They don't disobey Him. And they do exactly what they are told. 
So that is the fire of hell. The fuel of the fire of hell is man and stone. Okay, so we have no business with the stone. As long as we're not in the fire of hell, we have nothing to do with the stone. But man, part of the fuel of the fire of hell is men. And when we say men or man, we refer to women as well. The species of man. And the beginning of that ayah is telling us, Oh, you believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, Kulukum ra'in wa kulukum mas'ulun ar ra'iyati. That every one of you is a shepherd. Or every one of you is responsible and everybody will be asked concerning their flock and their responsibility. So we have parents, husbands and wives, mothers and fathers and we have children and everybody have their role to play. So as we go about our business in the day, we meet and we greet each other. But there are other things that go on as well in our interaction. And one of the things that go, goes on in our interaction, and there are many, is that we have a little jealousy like amongst ourselves. We are jealous of each other. We want what the other person have. Not that we want to be like him or like her, but we want what they have. And we wish that they didn't have it. It's called jealousy. It's called hasad. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the Quran, Quran Iyakum wal hasad. Beware of jealousy. For inna al hasada ya'kul al hasanat. Because jealousy devours your good deeds. Jealousy devours your good deeds just as how the fire burns up the wood. So when we are jealous of somebody else, our good deeds are being devoured and wiped out. Jealousy leads to something else. Jealousy can lead to, to, lead to something that is called and in my song, Superstitious, Bad Eye. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, al aynu haqq, that when you give somebody the bad eye, it's a reality. Maybe the jinn that is with us might feel that you hate this person and may go and affect that person. That's a possibility. Allahu alam. He says, Yud, tudkhilu rajul al qabr. Wal-ibil al-qidr, or kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will cause a man to enter his grave and it will cause a camel to enter into the pot, meaning that it will kill. The bad eye can kill and it results from jealousy. And then another bad trait that jealousy sows in our hearts is that I want to have more than him. You see, we as Muslims, we are encouraged to compete with each other for Allah Azza wa Jal. Who wants to compete with each other? Compete with each other in goodness. Not to show the other person, but to show Allah Azza wa Jal only for the purpose of Allah Azza wa Jal. Our competition should be like that for Allah Azza wa Jal. So if I hear of a man giving money in the part of Allah, the Sahaba used to be like that too. They would go and give, not because they want man to see them giving, but they want their rewards to be with Allah Azza wa Jal. So they try to outstrip each other. They try to outstrip each other for Allah. Not for their own souls and, and to, show off, to show off people, but for Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is healthy. And the Quran tells us, Al-Hakum al takathur Al-Hakum al takathur Competing with each other to gain worldly things 
to gain material, material stuff takes up your time. It takes up your time. It causes you to be busy. It makes you waste your time. And we need to remember the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he tells us, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharibun wa abiru sabil. Be in this world as though you are a stranger or a passerby. What you're carrying with you, just a little backpack, a little suitcase or whatever it is. You're a passerby, you're just going through. And we are just going through this world. We don't want baggage. We want deeds. We don't want blackened hearts. We want pure hearts. We don't want sins weighing us down on the day of judgment. Sins that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us. Man ja'a bil hasanati falu ashram thaliha. Who bring a good deeds, it is multiplied ten times. Wa man ja'a bil sayyati fala yujza illa mithlaha wa hum la yudlamun. And whosoever, whosoever brings forth a bad deed, he's only given that amount, one. And they are not oppressed. And we go on the day of judgment with bad deeds, multiply it, and see what happens, and see the little bit of good deeds that we have done. We don't want that. al takathur. So takathur, competing with each other to get things. I want this, I want that more than anybody else. al -hakum. Make you busy and takes up your time, distracts you. Hatta zurtumul maqabir, until you visit the grave. Until you become from the companions of the grave. And in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, لَوْ أَنَّ لِبْنِ آدَمْ وَادِيًا مِنْ ذَهَبْ لَا أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ وَادِيًا If the son of Adam had one valley of gold, and that's a lot of gold, he would wish that he had two valleys. وَلَنْ يَمْلَأَ فَاهُ إِلَى التُرَابِ And nothing will satisfy him except the dust. He will keep on wanting, wanting, wanting until he dies. These are not descriptions of the Muslims. It should not be the descriptions of the Muslims, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So let us not busy ourselves with chasing behind the dunya and seeing what somebody else have. Subhanallah, there are people who are worse off than we are. And see what's happening in Africa. And we'll understand. See in Pakistan and these places where there's flood. Every day there's a picture in the paper with some people walking through some flood. La ilaha illallah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, وَابْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارُ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Seek with what Allah has given you the hereafter. But don't forget your share in this world. Take your share of this world and seek the hereafter with it. If you seek the dunya with your share, that is what you're going to get. The dunya and you may not even get it. So are we going to save ourselves and our family from the fire of hell? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, another sickness that overcomes us is when we slander and we backbite. And subhanallah, we all do it without even realizing it. Listen to a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when we say something about someone, and we are told, hey, we shouldn't be speaking like that about this brother or the sister. But is the truth? It happened, is the truth? So listen to the truth of the way we behave. The truth from the man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we claim that we follow. The truth from the man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who has been inspired by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ he, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doesn't speak on his own whims and fancies. It is the only inspiration that was given to him. So the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also inspiration. And Abu Hurairah qala, qila ya Rasulullah mal ghiba. From Abu Hurairah he said, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, what is ghiba, what is backbiting? 
قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ذكرك أخاك بما يكره. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم you mentioning something about your brother when he says brother he means someone in Islam. You mentioning something about your brother what he dislikes. Fine. قيل أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول. It was said. Suppose what I have said about my brother is the truth. Mm -hmm. Or suppose what I said about my brother is exactly what. Or, or, or suppose there isn't my brother what I have said. What I have said is what he has. What he what is with him. What he has done. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد اغتبته. If in him is what you have said, then you have backbitten him. That is backbiting. So if it is he really did what you said he, he, he's done, then you are backbiting. The truth. You spoke the truth. The truth about your brother who did something wrong and nasty and they're telling everybody is the truth. And the truth about that is that you're backbiting. That is the truth. You're backbiting. Whether it be about your neighbor, your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, your brother, your mother, the imam, the mufti, the sheikh, the peer, whatever, the beggar on the road, you're backbiting. If it is you want to cure what is in him, Counsel him, speak nice to him, get somebody to make islah, to reform him, to tell him what he's doing is wrong, not to spread his name all over the place or to gossip with somebody else. That is backbiting. Make dua for him. Have you done that? He did that. So and so was in the car with his brother. This girl was in the car with his brother and he was holding hand and kissing and whatnot. That is haram. You know, zina is haram. To fornicate and adultery is haram. And there's severe punishment on it if it's found out in this earth. It's haram. But do you go and tell everybody, hey, so and so was in the car with so and so and they was kissing and all kinds. Tell everybody, but did you make dua to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy on, on that person? Man la yarham la yarham, who doesn't show mercy will not have mercy shown upon them. And what it is do we want for ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam? So the hadith is saying that if you speak the truth about the brother, then you have done backbiting. وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولْ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّ And if it is, you didn't, you, what, what you said was not in him, then you have slandered him. So slandering, slandering, is when it's spreading false rumors. It's worse than backbiting. At least in backbiting, you said the truth. Slandering is worse than that. So when people start to spread rumors that are wrong, because a lot of times the rumors will be wrong when it reach somewhere else, they are slandering people's name. And when they speak, they speak the truth and spreading people's name wrong, saying that they did this and that, that, they are backbiting. Whether you say it in his face or not. Humaza is when you yourself tell any man about bad things in front of people. Or you're saying things about him in front of people. And Lumaza is when you encourage other people and you go behind him and you let it go and you, and you encourage them to spread things about him. In a hadith of Aisha, she said to the Prophet وسلم, if you know about Safiya, so and so and so and so. Something familiar, eh? If you know about so and so, hey, they do so and so and so. This one fat, this one thin, this one I have on a nice dress, this one looking... As though she's from the countryside with this kind of clothes on and that kind of clothes on. 
So she was saying, telling him something about Sophia, and she was referring to her as being fat. So the Prophet said, Lakat kulti kalimatan law muzijat bima il bahri la mazadatu. If you have said a statement, and she was just referring to her as being fat, maybe in a, in a bad way, you have said a statement that if it were to be mixed with the water of the ocean, it would overcome it. This is when we transgress on people's dignity and their honor. It is haram. And Rasulullah sallallahu himself said, I don't like, this is the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I don't like to speak anything about someone when I have so and so and so false. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying that. That he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, does not like to speak ill of anybody because he himself have this fault and that fault and that fault. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what about us? What about us? The amount of faults we have. And we always love to point the fingers the other way. And forget about ourselves. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kullu muslim ala muslim haram. A muslim, the whole of a muslim to another muslim is haram. It's sanctified, it's forbidden for him to transgress on it. And he, can't, he, can't, he says, Maluhu, his wealth is haram to transgress on. And his dignity and honor, his good name, and his blood. It is enough for a person to be evil to scorn his Muslim brother. When we scorn a Muslim person, it is enough for us to be called evil when we scorn them. And I always like to ask, how do you know? And that's why the Quran says, Liars min kaum. One set of people should not laugh at anybody else. Asa yakunu khairam minhum. Perhaps they are better than them. Wala nisa um min nisa. No woman should mock and laugh at other women. Asa ayyakunna khayra minhun. Maybe the ones that they are laughing at, at are better in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal than the ones who are laughing. So how do I know standing here giving a khutbah inshallah for Allah Azza wa Jal so that we can learn? How can I say that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to have more mercy than me than a poor Muslim beggar man? Out on the road with stinking clothes. Nobody wants to go near him. Can you say that? Can I say that? We don't know. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, Yahtasu bi rahmatihi man yasha. He chooses whom he wishes to, to, to give his mercy. And we cannot claim. That we have the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla on us. We can say yes, all the ni'mah, all the favors he has given us are, are all part of his mercy. But are our sins forgiven? He is forgiven, merciful. We feel confident that inshallah he will. But can we say for sure? So can we say we are better than anybody else? Anybody saying they are better than anybody else is like shaitan. And when we mock and laugh at other people, even though we're not saying it by words, maybe indirectly we are saying we are better than them because we are not being laughed at. So we have to be very, very careful. In another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was taken up, he said, when, he were, when I was taken up, I passed by, by, by some people they had nails made of copper and they were scratching their faces and their chest with it. Scratching. So he asked Jibril, he said, I said, Man ha ula ya Jibril, 
So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was shown people being punished in the fire of hell. He said, who are those people, O Jibreel? He says, هَأُولَاءِ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الْحُمَّ النَّاسِ they are the people who are eating the, the flesh of other people. Cannibals by words. They were eating the flesh of people. This is why the Quran tells us. Do not backbite each other. Would one of you like to eat the dead flesh of his brother? You would loathe it and dislike it. So this is what has been referred to her here. That these are people who are backbiting and slandering. And this is their punishment in the fire of hell. And there's other punishment as well. Also he saw some people. Other people were clipping out meat from the side of their, of their bellies and their, and, and their sides of, of their bodies, clipping it off, one piece big like a shoe. And they were taking it and forcing it down. Their, so in other words, they were being made to eat their own flesh. It was being forced into the mouth of these people. And of course, they don't want to eat it. So you ask again, he asked Jibli, who are these people? He said, Ha'ulail hammazun al-lammazun. They are the slanderers, backbiters. They are the ones who are spreading rumors. Whether they're false or true, they've been spreading rumors. As Habun Namima, the people of Namima backbiting. For you call who ahadukum. For you call who ahibu ahadukum and yakula lahma khi maitan for karihitumu. And it will be said to them. And this is mental torment. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of your dead, the, the flesh of your dead brother? You would dislike it. And he himself disliked to eat his own flesh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to save ourselves and our family from the fire of hell. And all these are misdeeds that we do unwittingly. In the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was telling one of his companions that the best way to capture your Islam, with your pillars of Islam and your jihad and all these, is to abstain your tongue, to hold back your tongue, hold back your tongue. And he explained in that. The thing that will throw people into the fire of hell most, most is the reapings of the tongue. What the tongue reaps. In another hadith, he spoke about the private part and the tongue being the two organs that will throw people mostly into the fire of hell. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, save yourselves and your family from the fire of hell. When our family, it is bad enough if they don't pray, and they don't follow the laws of Islam. So let us assume they are praying and they are doing all these things. But they are backbiting. They are chasing behind the dunya and the world. And they are not going for the hereafter. Then we need to correct them. We need to correct them. We need to correct ourselves. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Be very careful what you say with your mouth. May Allah bless us all and keep us on the path of Islam. And save us from the many pathways of shaitan. Save us from the evil of our tongues. And the evil of our hearts. And the evil of our souls. And give us goodness. And mercy. And favors from him. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Wa li sa'iril muslimina min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Usalli alayhi. وكل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك أصلي عليك وكل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك أصلي عليك وكل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك 
كل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك